The General leads the forces south in search of more Group 1 glory. Today on Wide World of Sports, we saddle up for a spring classic as General Nadim and the Mighty Encounter take on Melbourne's best in the Caulfield Guineas. Will it be a Northern Conquest or can Southern Hope's Tower K and Amram hold off the challenge? You'll catch it all on one of the great turf battles of the spring. Plus, we'll be taking a close look at Encounter and the General and learn some trade secrets about the partnership between Clary Connors and Shane Dye. The Group 1 action is running hot with a Turak handicap. Plus, you'll see Juggler and Falonte renew their rivalry in the Yolumba Stakes. Yes, we're out of the barriers and bound for the post on Caulfield Guineas Day. Right here on your Commonwealth Games Network. Home of the one and only Wide World of Sports. Autobahn with our 20% off everything sale. 20% off batteries, filters, in fact 20% off anything you can get your hands on. But hurry, sale ends five. Okay, Shane Dye is the man in the hot seat. He's riding in counter. I wonder what he thinks of the tactics for the Caulfield Guineas. Now, in a mile race at Caulfield, you only have about 200 metres to the first turn, so it helps if you can draw an inside barrier. A horse like General Nadim, he'll probably lead. He'll go forward. Other horses drawn in, like Amran, Mustang Red, they'll go forward too. Now, I'm on encounter barrier four, a lovely barrier. He's going to be running right there, third or fourth. The major thing at Caulfield not to do is be three or four wide, because Caulfield's a very turning track. At the half mile, they will take off. There's no doubt about it. The horses back in the field, like Sherbet, Torquay, they'll all be coming forward. Another one's bonfires. So you need a horse who can sustain a 600-metre run, and Counter can do that. Uh, so says Shane Dye. Uh, Simon Marshall, your uh, thoughts in the last, in the uh, final minutes before the race? Well, Kenny, they're all sensational-looking three-year-old colts here. Um, pick of them, I, I like, really like Encounter. I like Route 1 wave for age form, which you've talked about. It's going to stand up. He's a relaxed horse here at Caulfield, and he's walked into the gates lovely. Um, Rum's also very relaxed and very forward. And Schubert came around to the gates beautiful and relaxed, so expect a great run from him today. We've just got knowledge, got his front foot caught over the gates here, and yeah. uh, Greggy Hall's just peeling back. Um, Danny, Danny Britton there. Danny Britton, right. sorry. And this is an awkward position for this horse, because he could hurt his tendons or... You know, suspensory and things like that. I think he'll, he'll be a scratching. He's, he's got his uh, off-front foot caught between the framing of the barriers, and he's not really going anywhere. Yeah, they've got him, they've released it now, but, uh, yeah, it wouldn't have done him any good, Simon. No, no, well, that's against him, Kenny. Unfortunately, he's just come out the back here. He looks a little proppy. For those people who don't know, uh, a veterinary surgeon will now look up the horse and uh, decide whether he's fit to run. If you were on him, Simon, would you want him running? Um, no. <laughs> I must admit, he's a pretty valuable horse. And, it is uh, a lot of prize money. Yeah, it is a lot of prize money, I know. But I, I think for the uh, the welfare, you know, jockey included, uh, that's pretty nasty. There's a lot of weight being taken on that front leg over that front barrier. Now, they trot him around. Look, if they, they clear, clear him, um, so be it. He will run. But um, well, I can assure everybody that uh, you get a fair go. There's no way he'll run if there's the slightest doubt. But uh, if the vet has a look at him and he's OK, well, then he runs. Yeah, correct. And he's the man that's got to uh, make that decision. Uh, He's the professional, he's the science-minded one. He did all the study to find these things out, and uh, you've got to rely on him. Yeah, well, the jockey, of course, is uh, Danny Britton, and uh, he'll be uh, wondering now. He thought he had a good ride in uh, a top Group 1 race. Uh, might have been winning a half a million dollars, or the horse might have been. But, uh, well, they're still inspecting him. They've still got him trotting. Yeah, they've got him trotting. Uh, Simon, can you, can you hear us? What do you think? Yes, he hasn't got any markings on his legs, which is fantastic, and... Uh, just looking at him here, I think he'll be clear to run, gentlemen. He's uh, he's very free in his action. The horse has got his ears forward, and uh, usually when they've got their ears back on their head, they're uh, in pain or there's something worrying. But uh, he doesn't look to look to have hurt himself. He's he's very clean in the legs. So Danny's just going to swing up on him now and jump aboard knowledge, and we'll be ready for the big feature. As the West Australian McFlirt takes his place in the line, we're just waiting for knowledge now. Knowledge about to go forward, and as I said, uh, he's very free in his action. Uh, he wouldn't have been running if there was a slightest problem, and uh, that's why they gave him a good uh, looking into behind at the start. Okay, they're all in for this uh, time honoured Group 1 race. Let's go to our caller, John Russell. And Knowledge is set. All ready for a start. Set to go on the court. <laughs> Great start to El Morado, one of the first to jump out. Bonfire slow to get going. 
Out very quickly as General Dean goes straight to the front on settling down and advance there of Encanta who began well and Umrum is in the firing line early and uh, they're followed closely a bit further back by Dennis Urya as they race up the hill. Now Dennis Urya on the outside and General Dean together about a length in advance of Encanta followed by Umrum in the box seat just in behind them Tauke as they race over the top of the hill. A length further back is Gal Guru on the outside of El Marada. One and a half further back Mustang Red and they were being followed by Schubert. A length and a half McFlirt on the outside of Bradman. Two lengths away Knowledge is second last and Bonfires is back at the tail of the field. A well strung out fielder as they go along inside the final thousand. Dennis Urya three quarters of a length on General Nadima. Four lengths further back in Canada, a length to Umrum. Two lengths away then is Tau Kay, a length El Morada. Two and a half lengths to Gal Guru being followed by Schubert. Two lengths to Mustang Red followed by McClure who's a long way off the leader. So is Bradman at that point followed by Bonfires and Knowledge and about 15 lengths covering the field coming up past the 600 metre mark. General Nadim has hit the front in the guineas. General Nadim the leader by a half length in advance of Dennis Urya. Six lengths away in Canada being niggled out. They're followed by Tau Kay under pressure. Umrum is not responding at the moment. He's losing ground being passed by Gal Guru and Schubert as they're making the home turn. General Nadim is the leader. Got away by a couple of lengths in advance of Dennis Urya. Tau Kay is coming down the outside with a strong run followed by Encounter and back in behind them Gal Guru and Schubert. General Nadim the leader at the 200 metre mark is clear a length and a half Tau Kay. Encounter is struggling and they're followed down the outside by Gal Guru. General Nadim still the leader with 100 metres left to go. Now Encounter and the clear is coming at him. Encounter! Encounter hits the front. Encounter! Encounter wins from Schubert and knows away third. General Nadim followed by Tau Kay. They're followed next home by Gal Guru and further back is McFlirt followed by El Marada. Bonfires followed by Mustang Red. Further back Dennis Uria followed by Bradman and Knowledge is a long way back at the tail of the field and a bad last there looks to be Amra. Well, I criticised Shane Dye a bit, but he didn't panic when the horse wasn't going so well. He tried to trail through behind General Nadim, and all of a sudden, uh, Dennis Aria railed back to the rails at the top of the straight, placing Dye at a disadvantage. Uh, then he pulled out Dennis Aria. Dye kept his cool, and you'll see him here push between General Nadim and Dennis Aria in the blue colours with the white cap. And who gets the money? R.S. Dye for Group 1 Glory and he's paid $3.30 here on Super Tab. Home he goes, flashing up to run second is Schubert, and in third place is General Nadim, and uh, the General was beaten, but certainly not disgraced. Let's pick them up again. That's General Nadim on the rails in front. Now, Talke coming out at him, uh, I, I said uh, Dennis Rhea, he was beaten earlier, Dennis Rhea. That was Talke. Dennis Rhea was in the other blue colours, dropping off. That's uh, General Nadim in front now of Talke in the white cap, Pushing between them is Encounter. It was Dennis Aria that balked Encounter, but when he got clear, he got between Tal Kay and the leader. Shot clear. Schubert flashed up. Schubert gets up to run second. Close for third. Gee whiz. I'm not so sure. Yes, number two was held on for third. General Nadim just ahead of Gold Guru, who ran better than his stable mate, Umrum. Simon Marshall, give him a wrap from me. Well, Kenny, what a brilliant ride, Shane Dye, as, we, as you said earlier. Never panicked when he looked to be um, struggling a little bit. Shane, how did he handle the surface? Never handled it at all, Simon. He uh, just couldn't get around here. He, uh, he obviously looked, looked a beaten horse turning for home, but uh, to the horse's credit, I mean, he's got to be a champion to get up and win this race. Well, I also think what happened, General Nadem went so far from home that he had to stop. He came back, but, geez, he found the line. He found the line. And, Shane, tell me something, this horse... You say you never never handled the Melbourne way. Obviously a better horse back in Sydney. At, the, at, at this stage, but a lot of Sydney horses don't handle Caulfield. And I'm sure I'll improve for the Cox Plate. Well, Shane, he's, he, you'll stick with him for the Cox Plate now? Yeah, I'll ride him in that race. Congratulations, Shane. Yeah, thank you very much, Simon. A man who won't be puffing as much as Shane Dye is the trainer, Clary Connors. He's with Simon O'Donnell. I can assure you, Kenny, he's puffing. Clary, well done. Thanks a lot, mate. As I said, it's they're one of my hardest rides, I think. <laughs> well, he, was, he was under a fair bit of pressure from the 800 yeah, in, wasn't he? Yeah, but, well, they went hard and it, it, it slotted him the lovely fuzzy early. That's where we wanted to be. And then they went hard and, and I said to Richard Kelly, who owns the horse sitting in front of me, I said, we can't win come to the turn because he was sort of, other horses sort of went around him, uh, horse on his outside. And, and he was sort of on the hard riding then. But uh, then he sort of just, you know, he, he got a bit of guts the horse. He's a try, you know. And... Uh, Halfway down the straight, I see he's going to catch the leader, but then when is he going to get out of my back of Excuse me, I've got to go see me horse. Good on you, go and enjoy. Yeah, he's a Group 1 winning trainer, Simon. Uh, Clary Connors, and a uh, great run from Schubert too. Uh, Shane Dye brings Encounter back to scale, and, uh, well, 
a $500,000 race. The winner gets $325,000. And uh, uh, even if he just gets the 5%, Shane Dye gets over 16 grand. Not a bad afternoon's work, is it? And, uh, well, I reckon he deserved it. If you backed it, you're entitled to throw in for him. There's Schubert in the green with the uh, blue sleeves. Uh, Schubert, great run, ran second. Stephen King rode him. But really, you can't take anything away from Encounter. Uh, he was the best horse on the day. Got into a bit of trouble there when Dennis Aria rolled back behind General Nadim. Then he had to push uh, uh, the uh, other Lee uh, Friedman trained horse, Taukei, out of the way. Well, he didn't really have to push him, but he had to negotiate the horse's head into the gap. He did that. He pushed between Taukei and the tiring uh, General Nadim. And, uh, well, he won the money. And that's all punters ever ask you to do. <laughs> that's probably all that trainers and owners ever want you to do. I wouldn't mind uh, having another look at the action in the straight. It was uh, uh, very, very uh, hectic because of the fast speed set up by General Nadim. And, uh, well, a uh, bit surprising Dennis Aria took him on to the extent he did. But uh, let's pick them up. Now, on the turn, it's General Nadim in front of Dennis Aria. Now, there's Taukei going up third, the other horse in the blue, in the white cap. Now, back along the rails is Encounter with the white cap. At this stage, they got away a bit from the others, although Schubert is just uh, white with the green spots are starting to push. Now, Dennis Aria checks. Uh, Taukei uh, goes up to challenge General Nadim, but his charge was short-lived. And Encounter, on a straight run, not on a turn now in the home straight, consents to do his best. Dai pushes him through the gap, doesn't panic, just hands on heels, might be slapping him a little with his inside hand, uh, with the whip in that hand, but he, well, he prevailed and he got the prize. TAB number one in counter first, Schubert ran second, General Nadim third, officially fourth was number eight, Gold Guru, what a run it was, and officially fifth was the fading Taukei. Now on Super Tab, Encounter has paid $3.30 and $1.60, Schubert has paid $3.50 for the place, and General Nadim has paid $2.30. The numbers were 1, 5 and 2, and all 13 started as we take a break on the wide world of sports. Yes, we're out of the barriers and bound for the post on Caulfield Guineas Day, right here on your Commonwealth Games Network, home of the one and only wide world of sports.